what are the constraints posed on us? One is that we have a large brain that we need to feed it. Number two, we have specialized because we now have a large small intestine. So here it's important to pause and get you guys involved. We have a mouth, an esophagus, a stomach, a duodenum, and then what comes after that? Small intestines, right? right. So the largest part of the human digestive system is what? Small intestines. 56 to 60 percent. Mm. Many of you think that fiber is very good and I have a doubt that when I tell people that hey fiber is useless don't eat it <laughs> because I want to put some balance into that. Where do you think we metabolize? Where do you think we use the fiber? So the only place where we use fiber is at the end of our digestion and our colon is rudimentary. It's about less than 15% of the digestive system. It's got limited fermenting capacity. And you ferment and make B12 in the colon, mm. but you can't absorb it. We also have an acid-based digestion. Why is that important? Because what that means is that the food that we eat is not broken down by bacteria. It's broken down by stomach acid with pepsin. and so in other words, to digest and absorb protein, B12, and minerals, you need stomach acid. And if you eat a lot of fiber along with your protein, you will not absorb the protein and you will not absorb the minerals. Here is another important limitation posed on us. We don't have a very strong pancreas. Now what does pancreas do? It releases insulin. And why do we need insulin? Insulin is needed so that we can process carbohydrate. So we are bestowed with a pancreas that cannot handle a large glycemic load or a glycemic index because if you give it a large amount of sugar or carbs the pancreas simply dies and you get failure to make the insulin. There are many people who would like to put it down and I have gone through these papers and I'm simply not convinced. I think that the expensive tissue hypothesis that our brain poses limitations on our diet is absolutely right. So we're going to take on fermentation. So the fermentation can either occur in the foregut, that is it can occur in the stomach or in the hindgut like we do at the end of our digestion or you can have an acid based, enzyme based dig digestion. In other words you are breaking down the food with acid, with pepsin, with amylase, with lipase which are things that break down protein starch and fat 